Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But tonight's reflection will come from Book of Psalm, chapter 8, from verse 3 to 5. Book of Psalm, chapter 8. Book of Psalm, chapter 8, from verse 3 to 5. And the theme of our contemplation is, You are always in my mind. You are always in my mind. Let's go into prayer. Father in heaven, I, your unworthy servant, stand before your presence to appreciate your thoughtfulness. You so much love us that you planned our salvific mission with your Son and the Holy Spirit. Your Son came, and when he was walking on earth, he was thinking well of us. He saw us a sheep without a shepherd. He volunteered to shepherd us and even when he's supposed to rest. Jesus did not rest. Jesus had us in mind at all times. He looked at the crowd and said they are like sheep without a shepherd. And he went back to preach to them and to bless them. You are still doing the same thing today because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when he finished his work on earth, he promised us the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God descended on the apostles and they spoke in different tongues. These are evidences that show divine love on his own children. Father, there are many people that are thinking that you have forgotten them. Yes, we know that you, we are always in your mind. There is no forgetfulness in the Lord. But in our human thoughts and language, we speak this language, God, you have forgotten us. God, you have not remembered us. Your children cry to me every day, and when they cry to me, I cry to you. When they knock at my door, I lament to God in prayer. Father, some are feeling abandoned. Some feel marginalized in many ways. Some feel betrayed because they are worshiping and adoring you. They feel that enemies are laughing at them. Enemies, some of them are progressing. But some of the children of the light, they don't see the light. When they are facing hardship, some of them that are weak lose their bearing. Some feel lonely. Father, I'm presenting their feelings before you tonight. You are God that is very emotional. That's why I'm speaking the language of emotion to you. Yes, Jesus, there was a time your heart was troubled. You, you spoke to your apostles. You said, my heart was troubled. And you told them, one of you will betray me. In the same way, Father, some of your children are feeling the same way towards you. I pray that you visit them, visit them one by one to comfort them. Fill us with your divine presence. When we are praying, we believe that God is working on our petition. When God is planning to bless us, the enemy wants to mess us up. When we gather in prayer, you are scattering our enemies. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When they are planning against us, you are frustrating, frustrating their effort. When they are intimidating us, Father, you are invigorating us. Father, we are always having strong faith in you because we know that you always have us in mind. We really appreciate your divine benevolence. 
we really appreciate your divine presence. We really appreciate your compassionate heart, Jesus. We really appreciate your paternal grace and favor, Father. May your glory shine upon us in the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, your life is not worthless. You are not just ordinary thing, you want more than silver and gold in the eyes of the Lord. You want more than the sparrows. You want more than every creation and every creature on earth. You are created in the image and likeness of God. God spoke and the world was made. But when it was time to create man and woman, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit had a meeting and created us in their own image and likeness. Your life is secure in the Lord, for it thinks of you on daily basis. If human beings think about their own family, you can imagine how God thinks of you. When you have people in mind, what do you wish them? When you have people in mind, what do you plan for them? If you have your family in mind, no matter where you go, you must be trying to come back on time because your family is always in your mind. Your wife is always in your mind. Your husband is always in your mind. Your children are always in your mind. Your in-laws are always in your mind. When you are visiting home, you have them in your mind. You will be thinking about what to give them, how to make them relax, how to give them the palliatives, how to make them happy, and they will welcome you with joy and happiness. When you treat your in-laws very well, you see them dance. And you hear them say, oh, our in-law, you remembered us. And the, the kind of joy they have is different from any kind of joy. They cannot even define it. They can't even explain the kind of joy they have. Seeing someone that remembered them and, and just take them on our ways. When you have people in mind, they know. When you have children in mind, they know. Children, when you have your parents in mind, they know. I've heard stories about children that surprise their parents. One of the ladies that her phone was uh, acting out told me, guess what, Father? My children surprised me with a, 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 a cell phone. I did not know it, it belonged to me. Because the lady had the same son, uh, uh, first name with the daughter, one of the daughters. And she thought it was the package of one of the daughters. And she ignored it. The kind of excitement filled up in her story will show you the kind of joy she had. Tears of joy. The children had her in mind and surprised their mother whose cell phone was having problem with a new cell phone. She did not expect it. She did not even know that it was coming. And she is in this line. She did not even know that I, will, that I captured something that I will share in this line. It is good to share good things. I will not mention the name. But I just want the story and the, and the message. When you have somebody in mind, that person may not even know that you have him or her in mind. Look at these beautiful children. 
they had their mother in mind without their mother knowing that they were thinking of her. When you are doing this kind of thing, goodness to your brother or your sister or your parents or your in-laws or your siblings, why wouldn't you be loved? Why wouldn't God be blessing you? Why wouldn't there be peace and love and serenity in your own family? You know, sometimes we do not even know how to sustain love and peace in our various homes. These are the ways. Money is not everything. Little thing may wow your brother or your sister. Little thing may elevate the happiness and joy of your family. Just little thing, little thing. What you don't even regard as anything may even be the thing that will bring joy and happiness and radiate joy and happiness in your family. When you are thinking good about the other, and the other is thinking good about you, you see the joy and happiness meet. And there will be joy and serenity hovering around your family. And no longer, and nobody will ever, ever be thinking about uh, malice or hatred. All you will be thinking is about joy and happiness. How can I make my brother or my sister happy? How can I make my father or my mother happy? Mothers, how can I make my children happy? Money is not everything. Money is not everything. Money is not everything. There are certain things money cannot buy. Look at this mother that wasn't even expecting food from the children because her own gigabytes could not download many of the things and she, she always loved to listen to Father Mado and our prayer line and she was not happy that he would, she would not come in and guess what happened? The children surprised this woman and she didn't even waste time to call Father Mad and say, Father Mad, you know, I will, I will come into your, in your prayer line today. And I was just laughing. I, I was shuckling. She didn't even know that I would share this moment. It's good to speak about good things, especially when children surprise their parents, when children are doing the right thing. Not when they are doing wrong to never that You start you be, be killing them. When they do the right thing, you have to eulogize. You have to give them accolades. You have to give them kudos so that they will be able to do more, more goodness in the future. That doesn't mean that when they offend you, can just, you can't chastise them. But when they do something good, applaud them. Applaud them. They, they need it. So you can imagine the joy of this woman. When you have people in mind, what do you say to them when you see them? When you have people in mind, do you surprise them with good things? Some people give away things grudgingly, while people, some other people give away things with joy and happiness. How do you people respond to your thoughts about other people? How do you welcome other people's thoughts? Especially when you are sharing moments with others. Do you allow people to contribute their ideas in a meeting? They may have genuine thoughts to share in the meeting. Because they care about your group. They care about you. And you care about them. Do you allow people to air their view without distraction, without smearing at them? Everybody has something to say. Everybody has something to do. Everybody has something to offer to the community, to the family, and so on. 
So try to allow your brother or your sister to share moments with you. Except, for instance, at meetings or during conversations. God is always thinking of us. Do you think good or ill of others? It is not healthy, child of God, to think ill of anybody. Rather, it may cause you in our worries. The kind of energy that you put on negativity is not healthy. When people are praising your good works, in their mind and among circle of friends, the thought of goodness about you gladdens their heart. I repeat, when people are praising your goodness at your back or talking about your goodness among equals or peers or even having it in their mind, the thought of you and who you are gives them kind of joy that they cannot even define. In other words, you watch something in their mind. You watch something in their life. Without even you yourself, knowing that some people are discussing about your goodness and even want to share with your goodness. People love to share with your goodness. That's why people say, oh my goodness, yes, you are good. It may sound funny, but people just say, oh my goodness. People like to associate with your goodness. People like to experience your goodness. And people see your goodness every day. And you don't even know when you say, oh my goodness. Because you have a pure and clean heart. Someone that's, that is good sees goodness at all times. But someone that has a feeble mind an impure mind always have a polluted mind. A good tree bears good fruits. Bad tree bears bad fruits. Not my words, but Jesus Christ's words. Nobody wants to be forgotten. As we can see in Isaiah chapter 49 from verse 14 to 16 it says, but, but Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Even though she may forget, the Lord will not forget you. Look at that. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Look at how God speaks to us. That's why we are always in God's mind. Verse 16 says, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your words are ever before me. Look at that. You know, when God is speaking through the scripture and you listen and allow the scripture to talk to you, you will gain a lot. You will gain a lot by listening to God speak to us through the scripture. Look at our, our destiny and look at, at the, the marks in, on our hands. No matter how we wash our hands, all the marks in our hands will never go away. God has given us that eternal mark forever and ever. God is with us, children of the light. And he was saying, even if a nursing mother forgets the child that was sucking the breast, that the Lord will not forget us. Look at that. God is always with us, and God is always thinking well of us. God is not a human being that can easily forget. 
chuku salako wa wono. If God sleeps, ha, the whole world will collapse. God does not sleep. You can imagine when God sleeps, what will happen to this world. You can imagine when a pilot sleeps, or if the driver sleeps, they will enter the bush. Many people have tried it. Many have seen those people. But God does not sleep. That's why he spoke to us through Isaiah 49, from verse 14 to 16. Can a mother forget the baby at her birth? And in Isaiah chapter 66, from verse 1 to 15, he said, Come, and I'll comfort you with my consoling breast. That is God presenting himself as a nursing mother. He always ha have us at his beck and call. You are always in my mind. A very good mother always think about feeding his children or her children on time. Feeding her husband on time. Oh, let me go and prepare something for my husband though. The same thing is applicable to a good husband. Oh, my wife will be worried. I have to go. Among friends. Some friends will even be, 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 be laughing at him. You always love your wife. Yaworo, love your wife. When people are teasing you, tell them, I don't joke with my wife. I don't joke with my husband. Let them laugh over you or laugh at you. But you, so far you are doing the right thing. You are family first before other people in a positive way, I mean. You have to have your family in mind. Then you can reach out and help other people. One of these says, if, if, you're, if you're on fire, you have to first of all remove the fire on you before you, you're able to remove the one on your, on, your, on your baby and son. You can't carry the fire and go to the baby. You remove your own first. So your, your family matters a lot. Take care of your family. Then take care of the rest if you can. Isaiah chapter 22 from verse 19 to 23. You from your office. And I will pull you down from your station. It depends on different versions of the Bible. Uh, then this one says, Then it will come about in that day that I will summon my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. And I will clothe him with your tunic and tie your sash securely about you. I will entrust him with your authority. Listen to this. And he will become a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judea. Then I will set the key of the house of God on his shoulder. Look at that. When he opens, no one will shut. When he shuts, no one will open. Look at that. Isaiah is speaking to us today. Isaiah is talking to you and I tonight. When he opens, no one will close. And when he closes, no one will open. Isaiah 22 from verse 22 following. When you open, when God opens your door, nobody can close it. Someone may delay you, but he can never close your door. And the every disappointment is a blessing. You can delay someone, but you cannot open, close the door. Unless God does not want you to go there. But if God okays anything, the sky is your limit. You are unstoppable, unstoppable child of God. Isaiah 22, from verse 22 to 23, says, I will set the key of the house of David on his shoulder. When he opens, no one will shut. 
When he shuts, no one will open. Isaiah chapter 22, from verse 22 to 23. Claim this passage tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever door that is closed, God is giving you the key tonight. And that key is peculiar to you and your family. Nobody can take away the key from you. And nobody knows the combination of that key, only you and your family. Because God is calling you his delight. Isaiah 62 from verse 1 to 5. You are the delight of God. Because you always have in mind. And say, and he continues, and he will become a throne of glory to his father's house. Look at that. Father, we pray for many families that have nobody in mind to reach out to for assistance. I raise up my hands of blessing upon many people that have nobody thinking for them or thinking about them. We pray for many families, for many people that have been feeling lonely, but they have many people in their lives. How can someone have many people in his life or her life and still you, you, you live as if to say nobody is in your life? Some people have many people in their life, but nobody is thinking about him or her. We pray for such people tonight that God will open many doors so that people will come to their rescue in the mighty name of Jesus. Book of Psalm 8 we are reflecting upon tonight from verse 3 to 5 says, When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. Look at that. What is man that you care, care for him? Look at we ourselves. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They plan to come and save us. To save our souls. God is thinking of us. Because we are always in the mind of God. Letter to the Hebrew chapter 2 verse 6 says, but somewhere it is testified in these words, What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for, me, for him? Look at that. Book of Job chapter 17, chapter 7 verse 17. So it says, What is man that you should exalt him? That you should set your heart upon, upon him? Job seven seventeen. All these things are referencing that God is always thinking about us. Psalm 144 verse 3 says, O Lord, what is man that you regard him? Look at that. The son of man that you think of him. If God is for us, who shall be against us? If God is for you, child of God, who shall be against us? So sometimes you think that you are just alone, but you don't know that God is thinking of you. You want more than the silver and gold. You want more than any sparrow. You want more than all the animals in this planet, I tell you. God so much loves us. In Gospel of Matthew chapter 10, from verse 30 to 30, he says, And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Look at that. The Gospel of Matthew showed us today how God so much cares for us. And how he carries us in his mind every time. Even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. 
you are worth more than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father in heaven. And if you deny me, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. That's Jesus talking to us. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, from verse 30 to 35. You want something, child of God. You are not worthless. When things are not moving the way you're supposed to, or the way you are thinking, calm down. I know you will say, for how long? If you are healthy and, and, and alive, you will achieve your goals. Someone that is sick does not think about what he or she will achieve. He or she will be occupied with being well healthy. It's only the, the one that is healthy that will say, I am hungry. The sick doesn't even know the test of food. Thank care God that you are healthy. And sometimes when we are healthy, we are in a hurry. And some of us are even faster than the hurricane because we are in a hurry. We have to slow down. We have to calm down. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, verse 33 to 36 says, Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, and how unscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of God, or who has been his counselor? Look at that. Who has known the mind of God? Or has been his counselor? Verse 35. Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaired? Verse 36. For from him and to him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. What can you give God? What can you give God? I say you have given him something bigger. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Look at that. Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. God is speaking to us because we are, we are his children. Book of Psalm 139, from verse 16 to 17 says, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O Lord. How great is the sum of them. Look at that. You are worth more than the sparrows, child of God. That's what the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10, from verse 29 to 31 is telling you. You want more than a sparrow. Therefore, do not be afraid of tomorrow. Matthew 6, 34 says, think less about tomorrow. That doesn't mean that you cannot plan. Plan in the name of God. You can plan. But you say, by God's grace, I will accomplish this. By God's grace, I will be there tomorrow. Don't say, I will be there tomorrow. Not, not by your own power. Always bless in the name of God. Gospel of John, chapter 14, from verse 13. Ask in the name of God. Bless in the name of God. Wish something in the name of the Lord. And God will bless it for you. Do not, do not allow the devil to cross your blessings. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 28 to 29 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the, the called according to to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Look at that. Everything will work out well for you once God is for you. 
who shall be against you? First Peter chapter two verse nine says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of God, who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at that. God chose us. Our generation was chosen by God. We are also royal priesthood, respectively. We are a holy nation because God is in our life. When God is with you, who shall be against you? Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, from verse 4 to 5, says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined, predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Look at that. We are not just created by chance. There was a plan before we came. Let us make man in his own image and likeness. They planned it and executed it. That's why we are so precious in the eyes of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Look at that. We are God's work. We are the handmaids of the Lord. First Timothy chapter two verse three to four says, "For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God and our Savior, who desires all men to be saved. Look at that, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. All these things were happening because we are in the mind of God." We are in the minds of God. We are in the mind of God. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3 to 4 says, As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and, and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Look at that. When God is thinking of you, He's planning for you too. Book of Psalm 94 verse 14 says, For the Lord will not cast off His people, nor will He forsake His inheritance. Look at that. You can't run away from your shadow. Your shadow follows you all the time. Therefore, since we are created in the image and likeness of God, how can we be far away from God? We are glued to God. We are stuck with Him for life. God is with us. And the book of Joshua, chapter, chapter 1, verse 9 says, Be strong and of good courage. Which means there are good courage and bad courage. He said, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 9. God is always in your mind. And in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8 it says, And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. Look at that. When God is, when you are always in the mind of God, He will go before you and after you. He will put the hedge of divine protection upon you. Ask yourself, why are you still alive? Why many people you know, some of them have died. Are you the holiest one? Are you the most holy? In spite of our unworthiness, we are still bleeding. In spite of our unworthiness, we are still standing. Some people have fallen. Are you holier than them? 
That's why I always tell myself, I'm an unworthy servant. Humble yourself before the Lord, and the Lord will take care of you. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at that. Because he, we're always in God's mind. He will not allow us to perish. He will not allow us to perish in the mighty name of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes, just believe, whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 16. In spite of unworthiness, look at what Paul says in Romans. Romans chapter 6 verse 22. But now, having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, you have your foot to holiness, and the end, everlasting life. Look at that. We are coming closer to God. You remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus went up to the tree, he was thinking about Jesus. He had Jesus in mind. And Zacchaeus did not even know that Jesus saw him. He was thinking about Jesus. And Jesus was thinking about him. That's a clear picture of what I'm trying to explain to you. Only when you see an abode. Zacchaeus went up to look for Jesus because he was very short. And he did not even know that Jesus took cognizance of him over there. And Jesus came to that tree and stood there and told him to come down, that he would, be able, he would be dining in his house. It was a big surprise to Zacchaeus. He didn't budget for this. He didn't budget for this. It was a surprise package for Zacchaeus. He was thinking about Jesus, and Jesus was thinking about him. And at the same time, Surprised him by showing up in his own house. God is knocking at our door tonight and trying to tell us, you are always in my mind. Even when he delays our petitions, we are always in his mind. Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 2 to 3 says, In my father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Look at that. If he did not love us, why would he be preparing all these things for us? If he did not love us, why would he have come to this world to suffer and die and assure us of resurrection and ascension. Just to tell us that he had conquered sin and death. He has conquered Satan and nothing will frighten us anymore. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, from verse 3 to 4, it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the, form, for the former things have passed away. Look at that. Book of Revelation, chapter 21, from verse 3 to 4. You know, when God is speaking to us through the scripture, all we need to do is to take in deep breath and breathe out and embrace the word of God and chew it and eat and allow it to digest. That's how we soak ourselves into the mystery of the debar, the bar affair, the word of God. Because the ruler, 
the glossolalia is also with us. We are soaked in the Spirit of God. Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, from verse 11 says, And a voice came down from heaven and said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. That shows how God so, so uh, uh, loved us. The same way he spoke to Jesus, the same way he is speaking to us, because we are baptized. We are the enclosed toy, segregatus our populo, people set apart for God. Because God spoke to Jesus when he, when he came like a dove and said, this is my beloved son. Everybody around had the voice of God echoing from heaven. And then the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. You are my beloved son, in whom I am well placed. So God himself always has us in his mind. <clears throat> and his always assuring us and reassuring us. Acts of the Apostle chapter 13, from verse 33 says, He has filled us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. I have become your father, sorry. You are my son. Today I have become your father. And in the book of Psalm 18, verse 19, it says, He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Look at that. Think about yourself, child of God, for a, for, a, for a while. Think about your relationship with God. And think about your relationship with your, your brothers and sisters. And be able to recognize the presence of God in each other. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 14 says, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, sorry. Say, the Lord, you are God, is in your midst. A mighty one who will save, he will rejoice over you with gladness. He will, he will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Look at that. It's in your midst. It's in your midst. Sometimes we do not see him. And that's why Jesus said, if, if you deny me among men and women, I will deny you in heaven. Whatever you do to the list of my brothers and sisters, that you do unto me. He wants us to be seeing him through our brothers and sisters. And, and that's why Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17, says, I am in your midst. Don't be like someone that, that is waiting for God and God uh, dressed like a, 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 a madman and he chased the person away and you are still waiting for God to come. God speaks to us in many ways and sometimes we may not even see God. God becomes invisible but he's very close to us. Very close to us but you may not see him. But with the spiritual eyes, you can see that God with your spiritual eyes. So at this hour, child of God, I invite you to look at Jesus Christ with your spiritual eyes and echo to yourself that God is always thinking about you. God is always thinking about me. Tell yourself, that God is always thinking about you. Book of Psalm 147 verse 11 says, But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him, in those who hope in His steadfast love. Psalm 147 verse 11. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him, in those who hope in His steadfast love. Look at that. 
In Isaiah chapter 62 from verse 4, for us, you shall no more be termed for second. And your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight. My delight is her name. And you are, and you are land married. For the Lord delights in you. And your land shall be married. Look at that. You shall no longer be termed for second. So when you think that God has abandoned you, or you are alone, think about Isaiah chapter 62 from verse 4 to 5. You shall no longer be termed for second. And he's telling you, my son, my daughter, you shall no longer be feeling that way. I always remember you. You're always in my mind. And look at, I will bless your land. Your, your, your land shall no longer be, be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight. That is God speaking to us. In a special way. And in Psalm 149 verse 4 it says, For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with salvation. Look at that. And God fights our battle at all times. God fights our battle at all times. God fights our battle at all times. As you, as you can see in Gospel of, sorry, in Psalm 18, from verse 1 to 50. He fights our battle. Our God is our strength. He is our rock and our fortress. Our deliverer. He fights our battle at all times. So when we call upon the Lord, He answers us. When God is speaking to us in metaphor, you have to understand that the Spirit of God will interpret it the way we will understand it. God is always thinking about us. You are not alone, child of God. You are not alone. Book of Psalm 37 verse 23 says, The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Look at that. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. When you are doing the right thing, God will bless you. And when God delays, that doesn't mean that he does not understand what you are doing. His delay may bring blessing in disguise in the mighty name of Jesus. The book of Isaiah chapter 42 from verse 1 says, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon you. He will bring forth justice to the nation. There was a, a young boy whose father so much love, but uh, the father was afraid that uh, if, he, if he gave uh, the child uh, the key to the Methodist, that the child will spoil the Methodist. So he told the child to go and learn how to drive. But the child wanted to learn with the car. He said, no, my son. Go and learn how to drive, and when you come back, I will drive along with you and see how you are driving, and then I can hand you over the key. The, the, the boy did not uh, like that one. He wanted to be um, cruising around with his friends, and then the friends would see that he was learning with the Methodist. He said, no. When children think... Uh, they think that their parents are, uh, are very slow. Uh, they want the parents to be moving at their own pace. You can imagine your little boy or your girl telling you, uh, Daddy, I want to drive. But uh, do you know how to drive? No. But I want to drive. Uh, you, are the right, at, 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 uh, you, you yourself will not even try to give that child your Oh, home. amen. So, child amen. of God. When you are thinking that you are alone in what you are going through, 
God is thinking well of you. Let's go into prayer. Father in heaven, I on what is seven stand before your presence to present before you your children. Many of them are going through a lot. And many of them are thanking you for what you have done in their life. They have learned a lot from you today. Let your Holy Spirit lead them, O oh Father. Let your Holy Spirit guide them, O oh Father. Let your Holy Spirit comfort them. May your Holy Spirit be with them in their trial moments. Let your Holy Spirit fill that space, that gap in their life, that atropic gap. Let your Holy Spirit fill that space so that they will not be fidgeting, O oh Father. I pray for your divine intervention in their life. I pray for your divine arrangement in their life. I pray for your divine presence. You are not embrace the yoke. You are not embrace the chain. You are not blesses them and encapsulate their being, Father. We have a Father that never fails. No matter what the, the, the mountain in our life looks like, you are bigger than all the mountains. You created all the mountains in this life, and therefore you are bigger than all the mountains and hills. Sometimes they look at the mountains in their life. They don't even know what to do. But in your presence, they melt like wax. Father, may we constantly be reminded of your firm, of your power, of your divine authority to command and to control. So that your children will understand that you always are their beck and call. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we're overwhelmed with what is going on in our life. And we look around and we think that we're alone. Fill us with your divine presence, O oh Father. Fill us with your divine presence. Fill us with your divine presence, O oh Father. That we shall be soaked with your divine power. Rescue us from the turbulence in our life. And bless your children with good health of mind and body. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going in to bless water and salt now. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you for giving us the gift of water and salt. As your children have gathered tonight to call upon your name, to worship and adore you, and to glorify you, I stretch out my blessed hands upon them. And upon the water and salt presented before you, that they will no longer be ordinary salt, they will no longer be ordinary water, so that they will be filled with their sacramental grace. I exercise you living water, I exercise you salt, that you will no longer be ordinary salt, you will no longer be ordinary water, that will be filled with the sacramental grace. With divine efficacy in you, you'll be able to repel and to rebuke all evil forces, to repel and rebuke all persuasive and powers hovering around the throne of the light. May it fill them, O oh Father, with your spirit of anointing, that all the water and salt on this line will be blessed in your name. I bless them in God, with the gospel of John chapter 14, verse 13, because it says that we shall bless in your name. And in your name, I bless all the salt and water. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open your hands. Father and Lord, I thank you for blessing our destiny. I thank you for blessing your children. Some of them are just coming back from work. Some of them are in their houses. We thank you for the grace. We thank you for life. I pray that you bless their destiny. O oh, Lord of love. Bless their destiny, O oh God of love. Bless their destiny, O oh God of love. Bless their destiny, O oh God of love. Bless their destiny. We are knocking at your door. We are knocking with prayer, O oh. oh God of love. Bless their destiny. Father, Lord, I pray that you bless the destiny of your children. 
Nobody will take away their destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody will take away their star. Brighten their star. Brighten their star. Brighten their star in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless their destiny. Whatever they place their hands upon, O oh Father, will be abundant blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless their businesses. Bless their businesses, O oh Father. Bless their job, respectively. I pray for a divine intervention where there is disparity, where there is hopelessness, where there is disparity, O oh Father, where there is hopelessness. Father, we assure them that you, my God, you are there. You are there to calm down the situation, to rescue them from any type of operation of the enemies. All the psychophants fighting them in their offices, Father, fight it for you. Fight their battle. I pray that you bless their destiny and brighten their star. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Use your hand and put salt in the water. May the mixture of salt and water be made. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the Power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Loving Father, we thank you that you have blessed the salt and water for us. As the salts are melting into these waters, let it melt also the tumors in the bodies of your children. Wherever there is blood clot, Father, melt them. Wherever there are tumors, oh Father, which the doctors and their medication cannot reach, Father, melt it for them. Melt them, oh Father. May they excrete it in the mighty name of Jesus. All the fiber be shredded, oh Father. All the ailments that your children are going through, which doctors and nurses cannot help them. All the cancer cells, Father, shred them. Father, repel and rebuke all evil forces that have been hammering or hampering your children's life. I pray that you fight their battle, oh Father, because I know that you, my God, are already my liberty. You fight with us. You have given us this divine instrument. This divine instrument, when we sprinkle it in our families, in our, on our body, Father, I pray that you place the heat of divine protection upon us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing the oil. Father, Lord, Jeremiah said, is there no balm in Gilead that my children's wounds are no longer healed? And so, Father, we present before you all the oil, oil of gladness, oil of grace, oil of healing, oil of exorcism in this land, because your word has already been planted in these oils, that they will no longer be ordinary oil. They'll be filled with your perfume and the aroma of grace that you my God will repel and rebuke all prosperous and powers whoever that is anointed with this oil will receive abundant grace grace upon grace grace upon your grace is sufficient for us Lord you encapsulate us O Father with your divine grace I pray that you my Lord with this holy oil in your name will repel every prosperous and powers and at the same time place the heat of divine protection upon your children both in dream and daylight because you are the Lord that gives message in the dream. You will not allow your children to be afraid in the dream anymore. There will be no negative dreams. No negative dreams in the mighty name of Jesus. Let their dream be positive and let their dream come true. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all the Bible. Father, Lord, I thank you for giving us the Bible. I pray that you no longer be ordinary human printing, but it will be filled with your divine inspiration. When we read the Bible, let the Bible talk to us. When we are reading the Bible, may we be able to eat it and chew it and allow it to digest. Your word is alive and active. Your, life, your, your, your word also food to us. I pray that you fill us and nourish us every day with your word. When we talk to you, O oh Father, with the words of the scripture, fight our enemies, fight our battle for us, fight our battle for us. Father, when you stand with us, no evil forces can come to us. You were able to stand in the, in the boat of Peter, and Peter was able to break that chain, that yoke. 
that had been holding him throughout the whole night, he was able to catch many fishes. And so, Father, when we speak to you through the scripture, Father, break the chain and the yoke holding your brothers and sisters. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all the altars on this line. I'm blessing all the candles. Father, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. I pray that you bless all the lights that we, are, we shall be using to enter the new month. But I pray for your divine grace. I pray for your divine favor. Let your favor favor your children. Let your favor favor your children, O oh Father. Children, your children are always at your beck and call. You are the one that directs our light. I pray that your light will illumine our own light. In your light, we see light. Without your light, we cannot see light. I pray for your divine grace to enlighten and illumine our hearts and mind. We shall not be walking in the shallows of darkness. We shall be walking in the light of God. May your children see light. May they never be corrupted by the children of the dark. I pray for enlightenment and, and wisdomize your children with your own wisdom. Father, thank you for blessing us tonight. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, Lord, I'm praying for your children and their scapulars and the medals and the rosaries. These are the gifts from our mother Mary. I pray for a divine grace upon them, O oh Father. That when they wear the scapula, when they pray the rosary and call our mother Mary blessed, they will be blessed too because this is the, the message from you, my God, through Archangel Gabriel. You were the one that sent Archangel Gabriel to give this message to Mother Mary. And this message has become our own prayer. I pray that as we say this prayer, we are calling her blessed. As she said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, from verse 48, you say that all generations shall call me blessed. That's why we're calling her blessed, because she's full of grace. She is divinely favored. Let her favor favor us. She has anointed, anointed favor. I pray that her own favor will intercede for us. She will intercede for us to be able to receive that divine favor. Let her favor favor your children. Because she is also our beloved mother. Jesus handed her, his own mother to us. I pray that through her powerful intercession, we shall receive all our petitions. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all the incense on this line. I pray for divine blessing upon the, all the incense that will be used for prayer in this, in this line. Father, Lord, I thank you for giving all the incense. May it, the fragrance from the incense repel of every spell, repel every spell, and expel every spell from our bodies and in our families. In the mighty name of Jesus, many people that have been uh, experiencing bad spirits and bad omen, Father Lord, I pray that you repel and rebuke all those people, uh, those spies and powers. I say to those evil spirits, go away from that house. Go away from that house. Yes, I'm talking to you, that spirit. Go away from that house. Stop following that man. Stop following that woman. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come against you. Go away from that house. Go away from that house. You'll be hearing this voice. You will never have rest. Till you leave that family. Till you leave that body. That body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I command you in this, at this hour, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, to leave that house, to leave that wife, to leave that family, to leave that family, that spirit, those spirits over and around that family. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus to leave that house, to leave that body, to leave that house, to leave that body. I command you to free that woman, to free that man, to free that woman. Repel and rebuke, oh Father, all persons and powers that are beholding them to ransom. They will be free. Whoever is set his free indeed tonight, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all the people that are sick. I'm blessing all your swords. I'm blessing all your your uh, tablets, all your liquids, your, liquid, your medications. Father Lord, I'm praying for all the people that have their medications. Some have sores because of the kind of the, the, the problem they have. Some are diabetic, and some of them have sores on their body. Father, I pray that those sores will start healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. They will start healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. They will start healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. Many have been going through insulin, Father Lord, I pray. 
I pray that you bless those people that are very diabetic. Both type 1 or type 2, you know the types and pray types. I pray for your divine grace. Let your favor favor them, O oh, Father. May it be under control, Father. We are in the land of plenty. I pray that we are privileged to be alive here. Father, be the doctor, be the nurse. May you control their diabetes, O oh, Father. I pray also for those people that are going through high blood pressure. Some are very hypertensive. Some are depressed. I pray for your divine favor to favor them, O oh, Father, that they will be able to regain back their strength and normalcy. Father, bless their medication. May it never have side effect upon them. Father, Lord, I pray for your divine grace to fill this house, to fill their house, to bless them, O oh, Father. Free them from all this high blood pressure, Father. Let it not kill them, O oh, Father. May they be alive to tell the, to tell the story of testimony about how you have done this life, how you have given them this miracle. Father, they are waiting for you to heal them and to control what is going on in their life. The doctors may say whatever they want to say, but you are the final doctor, O Father. Let that heart that has been sick be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that heart that has been sick start healing tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that heart that has been hypertensive start healing tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for other ailments that your children are going through, be it cancer, be it anything, whether it's the ones we have called or not. Father, I pray for, for people that are going through prostate, cancer, and everything. Father, I pray for you, my Lord, to take control of their life. May they respond to treatment. May they respond to treatment. May they respond to treatment. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayers. For I know that you, my God, you have taken control of our life tonight. Your children are receiving the blessing. <clears throat> Your children are receiving this grace. Answer my prayer, oh, I am your child, O oh Lord. Answer my prayer, oh, I am your child, O oh Lord. Answer my prayer, oh, I am your child, O oh Lord. Answer my prayer, oh, for I am your child, O oh Lord. You told us in the Bible to ask and we shall receive. To seek and we shall find, and to knock at your door. We are knocking at your door. We are knocking with prayer. Answer our prayer, Lord, for we are your children, Lord. Yes, Lord, for many that are sick, O oh Father, be it anything, be it attack of the enemy, you will heal them, you will deliver them. They will feel healthy again. How can somebody get a job and he or she is sick? Devil is a liar. Minister healing upon that hand. Minister healing upon that legs. <clears throat> All the wobbling legs shall be well again. All that paralyzed hands and legs shall be okay. Father Lord, I thank you for you have encapsulated their being and bred them divine grace. May you fill them with divine blessing. Bless all our children that are about to start school and the people that, the ones that are already started. Father, bless them. Free them from cyber bully, freedom from peer pressure. May our children that you have given us as gifts, we shall never lose any one of them. In the mighty name of Jesus, may they be alive to be able to see success and progress in their life. May their parents be alive to, to reap the fruit of their labor. May you, my Lord, take all glory and adoration in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.